The Lord be with you on this Saturday of the third week of Easter. Um, today, coincidentally, we celebrate the commemoration of St. Athanasius, a name which you might recognize from the Athanasian Creed, um, which has been uh, named after him, uh, probably not written by him, uh, but certainly written in honor of him and his great teachings, uh, especially about the divinity of Christ, uh, Christ who is true man and true God. Um, today for our, our reading, uh, we'll read the Old Testament reading for the day, uh, which has some relation to uh, the teachings St. Athanasius was known for. Uh, it comes from Exodus 40 uh, in the account of the building of the tabernacle. Um, so just as God was present with his people in the Old Testament tabernacle, uh, so as St. Athanasius is, is known for uh, confessing, uh, God is with us in the New Testament, in the person of, of Christ, the true God and true man. Um, so here first is our scripture reading from Exodus chapter 40. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles and raised up its pillars and he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, and put the poles on the ark, and set the mercy seat above the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle, and set up the veil of the screen, and screened the ark of the testimony, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the table in the tent of meeting, on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil and arranged the bread on it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting, opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and set up the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil, and burned fragrant incense on it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put in place the screen for the door of the tabernacle, and he set the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered on it the burnt offering and the grain offering as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, with which Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they went into the tent of meeting and when they approached the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. And he erected the court around the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Uh, here now is a writing um, by uh, Athanasius of Alexandria. The incorporeal and incorruptible and immaterial word of God comes to our realm, even though he was not far from us before. For no part of creation is left void of him. He has filled all things everywhere, remaining present with his own Father. But he comes in condensation to show loving kindness to us and to visit us, seeing the exceeding wickedness of mankind and how little by little they had increased it to an intoler intolerable pitch against themselves, and seeing finally how all people were under the penalty of death, he took pity on our race and had mercy on our infirmity and condescended to our corruption and, unable to tolerate that death, should have the mastery lest the creature should perish, and his father's handiwork in men be for nothing. He takes to himself a body, that of no different sort from ours. For he did not simply will to become embodied, 
or will merely to appear. For if he willed merely to appear, he was able to effect his divine appearance by some other and higher means as well. But he takes a body of our kind, and not merely so, but from a spotless and stainless virgin, knowing not a man, a body clean and in very truth pure from intercourse of men. For being himself mighty and artificer of everything, he prepares the body in the virgin as a temple unto himself and makes it his very own as an instrument, in it manifested and in it dwelling. And thus taking from our bodies one of like nature, because all were under penalty of the corruption of death, he gave it over to death, in the stead of all, and offered it to the Father, doing this, moreover, of his loving kindness, to the end that first, all being held to have died in him, the law involving the ruin of men might be undone, inasmuch as its power was fully spent in the Lord's body, and had no longer holding, and no longer holding ground against men, his peers. And that second, whereas men had turned toward corruption, he might turn them again toward incorruption and quicken them from death by the appropriation of his body and by the grace of the resurrection, banishing death from them like straw from the fire. Definitely heavy stuff, but uh, beautiful words uh, of our man and God Christ, uh, assuming uh, human flesh for our salvation. Uh, I'll now read just a brief paragraph uh, to end of biographical uh, information about Athanasius. Athanasius was born in Alexandria in Egypt around A.D. 295. He served as a church leader in a time of great controversy and ecclesiastical disagreement. At the Council of Nicaea in A.D. 325, Athanasius defended Christian orthodoxy against the proponents of the Arian heresy which denied the full divinity of Jesus Christ. During his 45-year tenure as Bishop of Alexandria, Athanasius wrote numerous works that defended the Orthodox teaching. His enemies had him exiled five times. On two occasions, he was almost murdered. Yet Athanasius remained steadfast and ended his days restored fully to his ecclesiastical responsibilities. The Athanasian Creed, uh, though not composed by Athanasius, is named in his honor because it confesses the doctrinal orthodoxy he championed throughout his life. I'll now flip back and pray the, the prayer of the day from the treasury. Lord Jesus, you took our illnesses and bore our diseases, bringing hope to the sick and the dying. In your death on the cross, you completed your work of bearing all our burdens, and on the third day showed us in your resurrected body the first fruits of the new creation. Heal us now by your word and sacrament, and raise us up on the last day, that we might live with you forever. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God bless you here on this Saturday of the third, sun, uh, third week of Easter and on this commemoration of St. Athanasius.